Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, Premiere Video Tutorial um, Part 5 Finishing. Um, so this is uh, obviously the fifth in the series and it covers um, exporting your video and everything you need to do to prepare for that process. Um, and also obviously the settings that you use for exporting. So uh, let's get going with um, part five, finishing. So in this session, we have um, duplicate sequence and final bin, uh, setting the time code, checking the audio and picture levels, preparing the sequence for export, export settings, and finally saving and testing. Okay, so let's get going. So, duplicate sequence and final bin. Again, it's all about organization and making sure everything's where it should be. Um, you need to use these little organizational tricks, otherwise you can end up working on the wrong sequence right at the very last moment. Um, so, uh, you want to avoid that kind of thing. Um, so uh, let's go to Premiere. So this is fairly straightforward. We just need to go into our project browser window and I'm going to expand this one out to fill the window so we can see what's going on. And all I need to do is I'm going into my sequences and I'm going to go to my final sequence, which is this number six. Um, so you can see that I've got quite a few sequences here in this particular video. And um, it's normal practice for you to duplicate your sequences as you're working um, at least once a day, maybe more. Um, so at the end of your edit process, you'll have quite a few sequences in your sequence folder, in your sequence bin. Um, but the final one, we need to sort of um, duplicate that one and make sure that we, we know that it's the final one and that that's the one that we're going to be working on to export. So it's just a matter of right clicking, scrolling up to duplicate, and I'm going to just rename that instead of calling that number six copy. I'm going to call that one final and enter there. And I'm also going to create by right clicking again in this black space here, new bin. And I'm going to call that final two. And I'm going to move my final sequence into my final bin just by dragging and dropping it there. So now if I close that down, I've got my final sequence in my final bin. Um, also, very important thing to do is to actually open this sequence. So if I double click this sequence now, I've now got my final sequence open and I'm going to close down all these other ones just, just in case, just to make sure that I don't end up working on any of them by accident. So now, just using this X, I can close that one, and that one, and that one. So I've got my final sequence open, and I know that that's the one that I'm going to be working on. So the next thing we need to do is set the time code. So this process here, um, it won't affect your export in any way, shape, or form. Um, there's there's no um, there's no need to do this um, for the terms that we're working in right now. However, if you um, get a job in a in a um, post house or something like that, and you end up working on a TV production, um, then you will be expected to do this as part of your. Um, sort of final export process um, and it's just it's just something that happens um, to all exports 
um, in TV world, basically. Um, and I'll show you exactly what it is now. Um, there's some debate as to why it happens. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to uh, talk about that um, right here, uh, but I will show you what to do. And, and I can guarantee you that this does happen um, in all TV productions. Sorry. Back to Premiere. So what you need to do is in your sequence, next to the name of the sequence here, those little three lines, um, we know from previous uh, tutorials that these are menus. So if I click on that there and I scroll down to start time and select that, I get this start time window. And in here, into the time code where it says start time, I need to add a one right at the very start. So the start time for a, in our time code for the entire sequence is 10 hours. Um, and like I say, don't ask me why this happens, um, but it does, and, and it's just something that you should get in the pro, you know, get used to doing basically. Um, uh, so just click OK, and that's done. And you can tell if you look at the time code here again. Now, wherever your playhead is, <laughs> it will start at ten hours. Okay. So checking the audio and picture levels. Um, basically, this 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 process here is all about making sure that we haven't got any audio clipping and any picture clipping. So we don't want any um, any of our picture to be overexposed or underexposed for that matter, um, and we don't want any of our audio to be distorting. Um, so. The only way to do this is basically what you need to do um, is go through a picture, your entire film, watch your entire film through. I'm just going to mute this so I can talk while it's playing. Um, so you're playing back, um, that's no good, you're playing back your entire film and you're watching the level meters just here. And basically you're making sure that the level meters are all averaging somewhere between minus 12 and minus 18. That is your basic output level that you want. Um, it can go higher and it can go lower. Obviously dynamics of a film mean that some parts of the film will be quiet, some will be loud that's fine you know we, we want that to happen um, but uh, especially dialogue should be averaging about minus 12 db um, and if it goes up to zero and especially if you hit the red already so i'll try and let me just boost this so the and you can see sorry about that you can see that w when it hits the red um it leaves these red indicators up there even when it's stopped playing um, just so that you can still see afterwards that at some point it's hit the red so you need to check that um, so all you need to do if anything hits the red or uh, is just use all the um, skills that you've learned in the sound um, tutorial just to mix those um, I'm going to un just undo that actually, so just to mix those uh, sound levels down again so that they're back to when we get the footage a more reasonable um, a more reasonable point exactly where you want them. Okay, so that's how to avoid sound clipping. It's just about mixing it down by watching it on the level meters and it's, it's literally watch the whole film through but but look looking at the level meters the whole time, making sure that they're hitting exactly where you want them to hit. Okay, so to avoid picture clipping, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, what you need to do is go into the color tab at the top 
and with a picture selected if you come over to the source window you'll see this little um, additional tab called Lumetri Scopes so if I just click on there give that a second okay and you can see that we've got these um, uh, visualization of the exposure in your image don't worry too much about what's going on in here um, if you've watched the color grading tutorial you'll 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 probably understand what this is um, but otherwise all you need to make sure is that you haven't got any of your picture isn't peaking over a hundred percent or down below zero percent okay you can see this tiny little bit here see where this little red line is there that's telling me that that is peaking and overexposed so what I can do is over in my Lumetri color panel I can go to the color wheels select the color wheels go to my highlights and this little slider next to the highlight color wheel if I drag that down then that takes that sort of overexposed area out and that's removed that exposure now so the whole picture's gone a little bit darker there so I can adjust that again using the mid-tone slider push that up a bit to make it a bit brighter and I can just sit again make the dark the blacks a little darker etc you know it's all about adjusting these but the mo most important thing is making sure those highlights are down and if you have the opposite problem where you've got under exposure so you've got some of your picture is, is bottoming out at zero then you do the opposite with the shadows you get the shadow slider and you push that up um, to make sure that those um, those underexposed areas are now into a proper picture area so like I say, don't worry too much about exactly what's going on with those scopes. Just make sure that there's nothing peaking above 100% or, um, or bottoming out below 0% and use the shadows and the highlights to lift or lower that back. And you can use the mid-tones to um, use any sort of um, exposure adjustments that you need to do. Okay. So preparing the sequence for exporting. Um, let's go back here. So you'll notice um, now that I've done uh, a little bit of adjusting on this clip that above the clip I've got a little yellow line whereas all the rest of this is green. So this is very important actually. So the green area is telling me that the all of the video clips there are fully rendered and they are playing back at 100% quality. The yellow area is telling me that there are some effects or something has been added to this clip and therefore the picture quality is no longer 100%. So the software is trying to adjust the picture quality so it's made it a little bit lower so that it doesn't have any trouble playing it back. Um, but in doing that, you've obviously lost some of your picture quality and that will come out in your final export. So what you need to do is make sure that you render all of the clips that aren't green. Um, and that's fairly easy to do, very easy to do. In fact, um, all you need to do is go up to where it says sequence, select sequence, and you can render into out. Um, so what will happen if I do that so I can create in and out points in my um, main timeline in the same way that I can create them in the um, in the source window so if I have in and out points set in my main timeline then this will render between those points so and if I've got no in and out points 
set in my timeline, then this will render the entire timeline. And, and in lots of ways, that's exactly what I want. So I can render into out because I know I've got no um, in and out points set there. So rendering can take quite a long time. Um, it's it's practically exporting your video. Uh, so um, this is only one small clip that's not rendered. If if this was the whole thing, you know, this this could take easily 10, 15 minutes to render. Um, but then this is a, a 35 minute piece of video. So, you know, the longer the video is, the longer it will take to render. Hi everyone, well sorry. Also, the more effects that are in there, the uh, the longer it will take to render as well. Okay, so when that's fully rendered, that's all good. You're good to go. But remember, if I do, do any more adjustments to here, then it will probably need rendering again. So rendering is the final thing that you do to your sequence. Um, so the other thing is, uh, like I said before, if I have in and out points set in my timeline, I need to get rid of these at this point now, because if I export, and if I export in a certain way, um, it can export only what's between the in and out point. So I just need to make sure that there aren't any in and out points here. So I need to right click in the top of this ruler bar here, anywhere in there and clear in and out. Okay, so a couple of other little uh, things that you need to do. So if you have been a messy editor, um, and this does happen, so don't worry, but um, you may have clips lying around at the end of your edit that aren't actually in your edit. They were sort of clips that you were maybe thinking about using, but you decided not to in the end, and you decided not to put them in, or maybe you took them out for a bit and just left them there. And they might be just lying around in this space in the end of your edit. So you need to get rid of those clips as well. Um, again, if I'm not careful with my export settings, I can end up exporting the entire sequence, which will include all of those clips that you've left um, lying around in the end of your um, video. And obviously that's not what you need. Just a matter of getting rid of them, deleting them. Okay. You can also see that my edit here is very neat. Um, all of my video clips are on track one and all of my adjustment layers are on track two. And then I've got a couple of little images and text on track three and four. So I've just done that just to make things neat and easy to export. Um, uh, really you, you should be kind of editing in that way anyway you, you don't need to use additional tracks and build castles up to the sky you know um, it's all about um, trying to keep things as neat as possible um, and you won't come into any trouble uh, exporting clips that you aren't meant to um, if you do it that way uh, okay so uh, I haven't got any clips here that aren't supposed to be there. I haven't got clips hidden underneath other clips and they're all gone. So um, yeah, try and keep everything on, on track one. And if you can't, if you need to use another layer, then go up to track two. And But just keep trying to keep a lid on it the whole time. Use as few tracks as possible. Um, okay. Basically we have a, um, sequence prepared and we're now ready to export so let's go straight up to file export and export media or keyboard shortcut command M okay so Export settings that we want you to use are format at the top. Format needs to be H.264. That is a really high quality um, compression setting. Um, it'll give you a, a small file size uh, for um, 
for putting your film up on um, social media sites, all that kind of thing, YouTube, Vimeo, all those sort of sites. Um, but the quality will be really high. Um, if you need to do a really high quality master, um, that's up to you. Um, that's not something that we're asking for. Um, you can do your own version if you like. Um, you might you need to choose a different codec altogether. But for now, we want you to choose H.264 as your export codec and format. So there you go, H.264. And under preset, select this drop down menu, scroll down to Vimeo 1080p Full HD. Um, so that's all we need from you. And it, even if you've done a 4K film or whatever resolution you've used, we just want a 1080p full HD version. So there you go. So there you have it. That's that's all the video settings you need to use. Um, but I'll just point out another couple of little things. This one down at the bottom here, time interpolation or interpolation, however you say it, you might want to choose frame blending here um, because that's a better algorithm for slow motion um, effects. So you might want to set that to frame blending, but only if you've got slowed down clips. If you haven't, don't don't touch that. It's not worth doing anything with that. Um, and then this thing over here, source range, this is going to determine which part of your sequence is exported. So at the moment, it's going to uh, export the sequence between the in and out point. Now, if you remember, there is no in and out point. So it's just going to export all the clips that are there. Um, and like I said before, um, if you had any clips lying around at the end, they would also get exported um, there. Uh, and if you did have an in and out point set, then you'd only export whatever was between that in and out point and not the entire video. So um, make sure you take all of your in and out points out and then you can just export the sequence between the in and out point if you can there's a little drop down menu here you can also set this to entire sequence if you like so if you do have in and out points set then that will ignore them and it will export your entire sequence but this will also export those little clips at the end um, if you haven't got rid of them so there's no right or wrong way there. It's um, it's all about how you prepare your export in the first place. So either one of those will do. Um, and then we're ready to export. But before we do export, the final thing is about saving and testing and something to do with naming conventions. So let's have a look at that. So just before you're ready to export this little bit here that says output name you need to click on the blue text and you'll get this little export save window we are going to save our final video uh, on the local drive of our computer so where our project folders are all stored then we're going to save this um, video in that final exports folder of your project folder um, wherever that is so if that's on your local drive or if it's on the server then either one of those you can save it in the final exports folder um, more than likely at the moment you'll be saving it locally so you can save that into your final exports folder um, but what I want you to add to the end of your film title so at the moment you can call this whatever you like uh, but just make sure you underscore h264 and you know you can call this the name of your film the name of your group whatever you want to call it um, however i will say when you upload this to vimeo in the Vimeo instructions, there are very specific naming conventions about how you should name your film. Um, that's because there will be so many films being uploaded to Vimeo, we need to make sure that we can keep track of them all. 
So you don't want your film to get lost in the ether of Vimeo. So um, please give it the naming convention that is in the Vimeo upload instructions. Okay. Other important thing to remember, if you are putting this in your final exports folder, um, and if this is going onto the server in your final exports folder, then this is also the place um, where it, it could be picked up for, um, for assessment. So you need to make sure that there is only one version of your final export in this, in this folder. If there's more than one version, then the people who are doing the assessment will not know which version it is and are likely to just pick one at random. Okay, so please make sure that you only ever have one film or one video file in your final exports folder. Okay, so you can click save once you've set that to the right place and given it the right name. We can click save. So then it's just a matter of clicking export. So this one is going to take a long time, so I'm just going to cancel that for now because we don't want to, we don't necessarily need to see that do its thing. Um, but when it's finished, it will appear in your final exports folder. Um, and what you need to do is watch the video that appears in your final exports folder. Open it in QuickTime or in VLC or any kind of video player, but make sure you watch it through fully. I know the, the last thing you want to do once you've finally exported your film is, is watch the thing again after you've been editing it for days or weeks or whatever. Um, but it's really important that you watch the final export through. Things can happen during that export process. You can get glitches, whatever. You know, if you did accidentally leave an in and out point in, you need to know about it um, before it goes out for assessment. Okay, so make sure you watch your final export because we can't be certain um, that whatever you've given us isn't exactly what it's supposed to be. You know, um, if it's only half the film, we're not going to know that. Okay. Um, so yeah, please make sure you test, um, rewatch your video at the end. Okay. That's the final premiere video tutorial, part five finishing. Um, and that's the end of the premiere series. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.